Vaginal atrophy is incredibly common. We, as far as we're aware, it affects half of all postmenopausal women. That could in fact be a huge underestimate because we know that women are very reluctant to talk about this condition. Yet uh, three quarters of women with this condition are not seeking medical help. The common symptoms would be vaginal dryness because with a lack of oestrogen, the tissues don't produce the same secretions and the same mucus as would normally be produced. The vaginal tissue, the walls of the vaginal cells become very thin and fragile and that can cause a burning discomfort during sex. I was probably around the age of 45, but that was only with the benefit of hindsight because I was experiencing symptoms that were very similar to PMS um, that I didn't associate with anything in particular other than the fact that they happened more frequently. One of the worst ones for me and one of the first ones that was recognised was uh, this feeling of being below par every day and uh, you just leave it and leave it and leave it, leave it because you don't feel ill, but you just don't feel well. Um, and another one, something, something I really feel passionate about is we've got to start talking about vaginas and vaginal dryness, vaginal atrophy causes serious problems in a relationship. The closer study showed very closely the effect on women's self-esteem. Many women lost confidence as a result of the symptoms they were having. Many women felt less attractive. Some women felt depressed because of the symptom they were having. And so there is a bigger impact than just the direct effect on the vagina. The discomfort that it causes, the unwillingness to talk about it, the embarrassment, the feeling that this is with them forever that can't be treated can have a huge effect on their intimacy, on their self-esteem and on their relationships. I shied away from sex and it wasn't just not tonight dear I have a headache, it's just I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to be near you, I don't want you to touch me and it just I became frigid I suppose you'd call it in old fashioned terms. I just didn't want to know the man I'd been living with for so long. We were going down the road of divorce, um, it was absolutely awful, very painful. My youngest daughter was about 12 or 13 at the time and trying to keep the arguments out of her range was very difficult but we were just hostile towards each other. He said that it was like sleeping with a stranger and um, still brings tears to my eyes even after all this time um, that because we couldn't communicate and we were, might, were in the same bed but we might as well have been in different rooms um, because we weren't communicating in any way shape or form. One startling figure from the British women in the closer study was that 70% of the British women said that they avoided intimacy because of their vaginal discomfort. And despite from those who had used vaginal oestrogen, it did show that they had less discomfort, they had more satisfying sex, they felt closer to the partner, less isolated, they were more intimate. Despite that, British women worryingly have a 50% lower chance of being prescribed vaginal oestrogen than the women from the other countries. So only about 20% of British women were actually receiving vaginal oestrogen. The main problem, I believe, is that we are very reluctant in this country to talk about the vagina. It is a really important part of all women's bodies, and yet we don't seem to be able to talk about it. Women are very unaware, first of all, that the, these symptoms are due to the changes that I've described, and they're very often unaware that this is related to menopause and related to hormone deficiency. The remedy is just so simple. Available in the doctor's surgery are uh, pessaries, gels, creams. Uh, there are some uh, products available over the counter, but you've just got to make sure that they address vaginal atrophy or vaginal dryness, not just uh, any old lubricant. And, uh, and the result is simple. The result is magic. What a change. 
I've never known a change in anything. It's like uh, somebody's giving you a makeover. It's just uh, the result is life changing. Even us as healthcare professionals, as doctors and nurses, we're not completely comfortable with talking about vaginas. Um, and so we have to be prepared to ask the right questions. In my experience, when I ask women specifically if they've had vaginal symptoms, they are more than happy to tell me the story. And often they will offload problems that they've been having for many years, but not had any avenue in which they could talk about it and seek help. So first of all, we want women to be more aware of the condition, more aware that it can be treated, and more able to talk about it. But we as health professionals have to be prepared to ask the right questions. Let's talk more. We've got to talk more about uh, vaginas. We've got to get men involved in menopause and understanding, and women themselves, finding an area where they can um, get more information about menopause and everything that's involved with it.